Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new to my channel, hello. Recently on one of my Taylor Swift videos, somebody commented asking me to make a video about my top 10 favorite Taylor Swift songs, and I thought that could be a fun idea to bring to this channel. I thought it could be fun not only for fans of Taylor Swift, but also for my long-term subscribers, because I think a lot of times music and lyrics can say a lot about a person, so it's kind of a way for you guys to get to know me a little bit better. I thought choosing 10 of my favorite songs was gonna be really simple, and that was not the case at all, because the thing about music is it is so like situational. It can be, you know, what you gravitate towards, can be dependent on what's going on in your life or an artist that you like at the time or whatever. Blank Space is such a good song when you're feeling petty. All Too Well is such a good song when you feel like crying your eyes out. So it's really so situational. So I went through and I kind of picked songs that you know, either I don't skip a lot in the car, or I have a favorite lyric from the song, or it really is just one of my favorite songs, the message behind it, but this list could change at any given time. There is a user on Tumblr who creates like this little survey type thing that you can find your favorite and least favorite Taylor Swift songs. Like it ranks all of the her songs in order of your favorite to least favorite. I will include that at the end of the video, but I will say I don't really think the list is accurate. There were a few songs that I love that were placed really low on the list, but I'll include it just for fun anyways. And also I'll say that I find that whenever the majority of the fandom goes one way, I tend to go the other way. So I don't know what that says about me and I'm sure I'll get a lot of kickback with this video, but I just find that usually when the majority says that they love a song, I don't love it as much and I tend to like the underdogs on the album. So I'm just gonna jump like right into the first song, but these songs are not in any particular order. These are just songs that I went through, picked the songs that I like, picked the songs that are my favorite, and we have this list. So I know I said that these songs are in no particular order, but this first one is actually my all-time favorite Taylor Swift song, and that is All Too Well, which probably comes as a surprise to no one, because it is a fan favorite. The thing about All Too Well is that is a song that I recommend to people that aren't fans of Taylor Swift. I recommend that song to anyone who loves music period. It is such a good song just from all angles, from a melodic standpoint, from a lyrical standpoint. I love that she took a song that has gained such like popularity, but it doesn't follow your typical songwriting format of like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, whatever. It doesn't follow that specific format and it's still so beautiful. This is also the song that I have tattooed here on my arm that you see all the time in pictures. It's I might be okay but I'm not fine at all and when I got that tattoo I was told that that's kind of dark. Is that really something that you want to carry throughout your life because it was very representative of the past year of my life. But the fact of the matter is that lyric is so applicable to all of us at any time. We go through our day, hey, how are you, how are you? And sometimes we just tell people I'm fine because it's easier than spilling your whole life story to them when really you just wanna say, you know, I'm really hurting, I'm not doing well. It was really hard to pick a favorite lyric in this song because the whole song <laughs> is worthy of being picked. But the line, you call me up again just to break me like a promise, so casually cruel in the name of being honest, it just like, it cuts so deep. And I think that might be my favorite, my favorite lyric in the song next to the I might be okay, but I'm not fine at all. I really thought I was gonna sit here and like wham bam get this video out. It was gonna be super lighthearted and easy. And my animals, the cats are jumping up and down around me, jumping on my, like, oh my God, I can't ever just film a simple video. But moving on to song number two. When people ask me what my favorite Taylor Swift song is, and I don't wanna just give the typical answer of all too well, I always turn to clean. That song is just so beautiful to me in that it talks about, you know, you spend so much time in this deep, dark pain, and then one day you just wake up and you realize, like, I'm clean. Like, you went through all the emotions and you felt them and you felt them so deeply, but there becomes a point in any situation in your life 
where you feel like I'm clean of it. The whole first verse itself is gold, but my favorite lyric I think in the song is you're still all over me like a wine stained dress I can't wear anymore and then hung my head as I lost the war in the sky turned black like the perfect storm. Beautiful. Next we have Lover which of course is from the newest album Lover and to me it is one of the most classic Taylor Swift songs already. It is a song that is going to stand the test of time. It's beautifully written. The big band sound is gorgeous. It's, you know, the perfect song for every every wedding and every just it's so it's written to be so timeless and so classic and her voice in it just the whole song does it for me. My favorite lyric from that song is have I known you 20 seconds or 20 years? Being married for over 10 years, that is what it feels like with my husband. Sometimes it feels like this man is such a mystery. I'm still learning so many things about him. Sometimes I look at my husband and I see things on his face that I never noticed before. It's like a new, it's a new experience every day, even though we've been together so long. And the or 20 years is like, I feel like I know everything about you. Like we are one, like it's, it's just such a simple, line that so accurately depicts a long-term loving relationship and then the next lyric my heart's been borrowed yours has been blue all's well that ends well to end up with you i think that's just a beautiful way of taking a very cliche quote of all's well that ends well and turning it into a romantic song with the to end up with you and then lastly, and you'll save all your dirtiest jokes for me. That one is more just the way that she delivers that line. Her voice is stunning. It, it really makes you feel that emotion. And then not only that, but like I talked about in my reaction video, that line again is so relatable and applicable to a long-term relationship because sometimes you say stuff to your partner that you would never say to anybody else. And it's kind of like this this witty, dirty inside thing between the two of you. And that's why I love that song so much. The whole song and those lyrics specifically are so relatable. Next to Lover on the new album, my other favorite song, which I have found is not a popular one in the fandom, which I don't get, is Afterglow. This is one of those situations where I talk about how music is so important in a time in your life when you are experiencing something and you can relate to it maybe more than you know the overall fandom can. And that was Afterglow for me. The past year of my life has been, it's been a lot of reflecting and a lot of therapy and that whole song is about taking your own stuff, your own shit, your own insecurities and putting those on to the person that you are in the relationship with and then later realizing like, oh shit, like I just took out my stuff on them, they didn't deserve it, it's not about them, it's about me and that has been the past year of my life is working through my own stuff and reflecting and my therapist teaching me these these exercises to work on me and not take it out on my husband and so the whole song to me just it has spoke to me I think more than any other song on the new album. I wrote down that for my favorite lyric the whole song is phenomenal but more specifically fighting with true love is boxing with no gloves. I don't know why that line is just so gritty, so so raw, because that's really what it is. When you are fighting with somebody that you are closest with, that you are the most intimate with, it's not fighting fair. Sometimes you say things that you don't mean, but you say it because you know exactly how to hit them and hit them dirty. And then the rest of that sentence, chemistry till it blows up till there's no us. And it kind of continues with that you're fighting dirty, you say something that you don't necessarily mean, but that chemistry, that dynamic, sometimes toxicity of that fight just blows up and then the relationship is over or it goes a lot deeper, a lot further than you intended it to. And then I blew things out of proportion, now you're blue. So simple, so beautiful, but how many times have we made a bigger deal out of something than we meant to and then we accidentally hurt the other person in the process? Another fan favorite, Getaway Car. Sometimes I wonder if I love this song as much as I do or if it's just the overall like fandom's obsession with it that kind of pulls me in and makes me think I love it as much as I do. But it really is just a fun, it's one of those fun Taylor Swift songs that 
is not fun in the way like Shake It Off or 22, but it's fun in the way that it has it has some beautifully written, really skillful lyrics. And then it's it's set to the tune of like a nice beat that you can roll the windows down right around near the beach. Just the feel of it, the overall vibe, I think is why I put it as one of my favorite. And my favorite lyrics in that song, the ties were black, the lies were white, in shades of gray and candlelight, I wanted to leave him, I needed a reason. Just her use of imagery, which is what she is so good at, like having this black tie affair, these white lies that they're telling like, oh, maybe we're on the men's, but you know, we're still together, but she's, there's so many shades of gray because she's in this transitional period of her relationship where she wants to get out, but she hasn't found a reason necessarily to end it. And she's, you know, vibing with this other person and it's all kind of coming together in this shade of gray area. And the, I wanted to leave him, I needed a reason. I think a lot of times we do get very complacent. We get comfortable and maybe we're not happy Happy, but we try to convince ourselves that we should stay or these are the reasons that we should stay just genius songwriting genius to me it's so simple so to say genius sounds crazy but it, that is what the genius of it is that it the simplicity it is so simple but so impactful at the same time then we have New Year's Day which I think maybe is not a massive fan favorite but to me, the draw of that song is that it is so intimate. You know, in all of her performances, she's sitting down at a piano, she's playing it. Everything about it just sounds so intimate and so personal. And I feel like I'm sitting down in a room with her one-on-one -on -one, and she's singing to me about this relationship that saved her. Just the whole process, the thought process of like, I've had you, you know, for this time or this night. And this is, you know, this big this big like holiday that people celebrate and make to be this big thing and in the moment it is but the reality is that she wants to clean up bottles with him and live the rest of her days with him my favorite lyric from that song is i'll be there if you're the toast of the town babe or if you're strike out and you're crawling home because that's what relationships are. You don't just love a person when they're up. You don't love a person when they are their most popular. You don't love your, love a person when everybody else loves them. You love them in all of their their kinks and their 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 kinks in their armor. Not like their kinks, but you know that too. Um, you love them even when they're messing up or when they strike out or when the world is against them. When you're in your own little bubble and you know the true nature and authenticity of a person that is when you love them at all all of their different phases of lives of life and then another simple line of but i stay when it's hard or we're wrong or we're making mistakes because what more i mean what better way to say hey i'm staying in this relationship no matter what we go through no matter when it gets really hard and it gets scary or we're saying things that we don't mean i stay no matter what and that is why that song just does it for me call it what you want is i'm basically drawn to it for the same reasons i am drawn to new year's day it feels like another song where you're just sitting one-on-one -on -one with taylor you're hearing about this relationship where she's felt these insecurities and she's felt this fear from the outside world and maybe things are just not going well in her life everything on the outside is all this this noise and this racket and this hate and this everything but she has this little tiny area of comfort in her life with her boyfriend that makes her feel safe that's what I feel when I listen to the song. The song makes me feel those emotions. The whole second verse is stunning, but more specifically, and I know I make the same mistakes every time, bridges burn, I never learn, at least I did one thing right. I love that line because to me, it represents the self-reflection that she did during that time, trying to figure out what role she played in all the chaos going on in her life with people coming at her. What role did I play? I know that I make these mistakes and I keep doing it to myself and I'm, I'm creating these issues for myself, but at least in all of this chaos and all of this self like shame and just feeling bad and gross about the things that I've done or the things I've said, at least I know I did one thing right and that was prioritizing and focusing on that relationship moving into a little bit more of a fun category this is why we can't have nice things when I heard 
that song. Something about the intro and the song, how it comes in so big and the sirens, or uh, I don't know if you call them sirens, but the song is just fun. So with that song, I said my favorite lyrics are, there I was giving you a second chance, but you stabbed, my, stabbed me in the back while shaking my hand, and therein lies the issue, friends don't try to trick you, get you on the phone and mind twist you. One of the geniuses of Taylor Swift writing is when she writes lines, she makes it, there's a word for it, and I don't remember what that word is, but she makes you feel the word. So when you're listening to this, and therein lies the issue, friends will try to trick you, get you on the phone and mind twist you, you kind of feel like you are twisting. You feel like your mind is twisting hearing that lyric. So I just think it's a fun song. I think that is a fun line while also delivering a very important message of, you know, I tried to give you a second chance. I was willing to forgive or forget and then you just kept stabbing me in the back and just it is it is that's what it is I think another generally unpopular song I wish you would that song 1989 in general is an album that I think a lot of people had a problem with it's not it doesn't seem to be a fan favorite but that album came into my life at such a specific part of my life where I think I needed that kind of upbeat, that really pop vibe. And I Wish You Would is just a really fun song that actually kind of has a darker message. And maybe not dark, dark might be the wrong word, but she, she has it in this upbeat, almost like anxious feeling tempo, but it's still fun, but you still have that feeling of anxiety. My favorite lyric from that song is where a crooked love in a straight line down makes you wanna run and hide, then it makes you turn right back around. Because to me, that's what the whole song feels like. It feels like this constant angst, this anxiety of, you know, we're, we're trying to fit in this mold, in this box of what a relationship should be, and we're there, but we're all over the place, and it scares you, and it's fun, and it's exciting, it makes you want to run away, but it makes you want to come back to me, and we just have this draw to each other. The song and the lyrics perfectly express to me the feeling that she is trying to portray in that song. I know places. This song I don't know what it does to me and I can't really put my finger on why it is one of my favorite songs. Something about the way that it's produced, the message behind the song, it just comes together to make a beautiful, a very fun, a very angsty, another angsty song. Can you tell that I always love the like, the anxious, angsty, slow, like, maybe I need to find some happier Taylor Swift songs, but I just love how she writes about pain. It's She turns it into such a beautiful poem almost. And my favorite line from that song is loose lips sink ships all the damn time, but not this time. Just the play, not only on history with the, you know, the loose lips sink ships, but also because you hear people say like, people, we like to ship people in Hollywood. So she's kind of playing into history and then this term that's always used in media, then loves a fragile little flame, it can burn out. Using a flame as a representative of love is such a good way to describe love. You know, you look at people that once, you know, on their wedding day, they were so in love and so happy, and then on the day of their divorce being finalized, they are celebrating it because it was such a nasty divorce and things were said, and it's it's so fickle, love. Like, it's here just kind of like waiting in the wind and you're trying to keep it alive, and one small gust of wind, or one big gust of wind, like, one thing in your life can take it and turn love into hate. Then we have the song Red from the album Red. This to me is like typical classic Taylor and I am glad that she did this song and kind of got it out of her system because when I think of Taylor Swift, this is kind of what I think about. I think about the way that she pictures love in her mind and she associates it with certain symbols, certain pictures, certain colors and she wrote this entire song about love in its entirety and all the colors that can describe love. All of these analogies of using the colors to describe the different phases of love or the different phases of a relationship, I think is just another really great way of writing music. My favorite lyric, faster than the wind, passionate as sin, passionate as sin, ending so suddenly. 
because we just talked about that with the flame like it can start so intense and it can be burning bright and it can it can feel just so warm and overwhelming and then like just like that with one big gust of wind it can be over ending so suddenly then you have memorizing him was as easy as knowing all the words to your old favorite song. Fighting with him was like trying to solve a puzzle and realizing there's no right answer. I don't I don't have to explain it. Like it's that's what it is. Memorizing him was as easy as knowing all the words to your old favorite song. It's just something that comes so naturally, so simple. Everything has changed. To me, this just goes hand in hand with clean. It's that feeling of realizing that you know you've been through all this stuff and this thing that once hurt you so deeply and that you spent so much of your time and effort and energy trying to heal from one day you just wake up and you realize you're clean or something happens in your life or you meet someone and everything changes from that moment forward and with such a simple song my favorite lyric is simple as well and it's just in your eyes look like coming home looking into that person across from you looking into their eyes it just feels like home it feels like comfort it feels like safety it's such a simple beautiful way of describing how someone else can make you feel safe and secure in a relationship the next song is Begin Again, and I think we're starting to see a pattern here in the songs that tend to be my favorite. Begin Again is the same thing as everything has changed. You, you watch yourself move through those periods of hurt and pain and move into the daylight. I was going to say into the lightness, but I had to say daylight because of, you know, lover. I've been spending the last eight months thinking all love ever does is break and burn and end, but on a Wednesday in a cafe, I watched it begin again. We become jaded by these things in our life. I know that when I have gone through hurt with people, not necessarily in a relationship, but people have hurt me, I've started to have this attitude towards at this attitude towards people that all people are bad and, and people are out for you know themselves and I would start to feel really negatively towards people until something happens or I wake up, I move through that period of hurt and I realize like no. At this point, my camera had died. I forgot to turn the mic back on. The video kind of like from here, but hopefully, hopefully it's okay. That's the kind of day I'm having. We are not all bad and we are not all good. Like we humans are so complex and so intricate and so beautiful. And we just go through things in life and we have to move through them. And eventually it's going to feel like a new beginning. The last three songs are from the newest album, Lover, and I don't know if they are speaking to me because they are new and obviously like they're fresh on my mind or if these are just going to be long-term favorites, but the first one out of that group is The Man. And I know a common complaint with The Man that people have is that they feel like it's almost childish, they feel like it's it's... It's, I don't know, I, th I, I think I've seen that people just feel like it could have gone deeper and it could have been a little more serious and complex to, to tackle such a serious and complex issue. But to me, that is the strength of the song. The strength of the song is that she is taking something that has so many layers and she's making it really, really simple. It's not something that should be complicated. It's not something that should be shades of gray. It should be very black and white. But the truth is we live in a society that men are held to a different standard than women. Men date around. It's They're applauded for it. Everybody thinks it's great. They're, you know, they're celebrated. Women date around and we get labeled a whore or a slut. And it's just the way that she takes these very specific examples and puts them into a song in a way that everybody can understand. To me, that is what makes the song which on top of that it feels very fun and the production kind of feels like a masculine production that kind of plays on this idea that it is a man's world the whole song is just really great and serves a purpose so it's hard to pick a favorite lyric but I put that one of my favorite lyrics is they say I played the field before I found someone to commit to and that would be okay for me to do every conquest I had made would make me more of a boss to you which is just what we discussed you have men 
going from relationship to relationship to relationship and they're being applauded for it. Then you have people like Taylor Swift or somebody right now who's in the news, Miley Cyrus, coming out and saying, why can I not date and experience things and find out what I like and what I don't like and go through heartbreak and why can't I do all of this in the same way that a man can? The next lyric, what I was wearing, if I was rude, could all be separated from my good ideas and power moves. Now, excuse me for using very specific examples, but I just got done watching the documentary. So let's use, for example, R. Kelly and Chris Brown. You have these men in music that have done these atrocious things, these disgusting things, and they are still being applauded because people want to hold on to their art, which is understandable. There is a psychology behind it, but people fear that if they have negative feelings towards this person, that the art that fills with that fills up their memories, like their wedding day or you know their graduation, these are memories that they have tied to this song. And if they're not celebrating that artist and their music, they feel like they're letting go a piece of their memories. Whereas we have women who have these incredible bodies of work, music, films, whatever, they do one thing and they get depicted as a diva or a bitch or hard to work with. It's just such a double standard that I love that she tackles that in this song. The next song I think is quite possibly one of the most Taylor songs that there ever was and that is Cornelia Street. Cornelia Street sounds, the production surrounding it is really beautiful. I love how she takes very specific details and makes them relatable to everybody. It's just, when I think of Taylor, these are the type of songs that I think of. I think of the All Too Wells. I think of the Cornelia Streets. I think of the Begin Again. Drunk on something stronger than the drinks in the bar. It perfectly sums up what love feels like in the beginning especially. You, you hear that you get butterflies in your stomach or that you feel high on love. You're drunker than you would be with the drinks in the bar. It's, it's a fun, flirty, witty way of describing what love feels like in the beginning when it's exciting and you're looking for the next high. and It's just a constant high. It's just such a good way to describe love. We were a fresh page on the desk filling in the blanks as we go. Just another, I feel like I'm repeating myself all the way through this video, but it's just another way of saying, you know, this is a new relationship with so much hope, so much promise. We're starting with a blank page and we're filling in this book. We're filling in our life story in this book as we go. We're figuring it out. We're writing it together. I love the analogy. Sacred new beginnings that became my religion. Again, it's just something how, you know, at this time Taylor was going through, you know, such a hard time in her life and there was all this chaos in the world around her and she found her comfort and her safety in this new relationship and she prioritized that and at that period of her life she prioritized that she made that relationship a priority and she put it above everything else going on in the outside above her reputation she was focused in on that and at the time that was so sacred to her it was so comforting it was so new and then it became her religion now in an established relationship, it became something that she continues to prioritize, something that she has realized like this is the foundation, all of the rest of it is just noise. It is the thing that she praises, the thing that she bows down to, it is her religion. I get mystified by how this city screams your name. And that's just such a relatable lyric for everyone. Again, you know, when you're in this relationship, you start to piece together these memories that are associated with this one person. And the whole city screams his name because all of her memories associated with him are in that city. And lastly, we have another fun song, Death by a Thousand Cuts. With this song, the weird thing is, it's not a favorite song in the way that like you cling to all too well. It's more that for me, this song is all about imagery and this is why I think Taylor Swift is so good at creating that imagery. When she wrote that song, she said she wrote it, she was inspired by the movie Someone Great. Personally, I watched the movie before the new album came out. So to me, when I heard this song, I can actually see the movie playing in my mind. At that 
time, Taylor was in this relationship that she felt safe in, that she felt secure in, it felt warm, it felt comforting, and she's still able to write about a relationship that fell apart, that the person is reflecting, and the person is hurting, and the person is trying to move on from it, and trying to put on all these band-aids to temporarily relieve the pain, and that to me shows her skill. I pretty much wrote down the whole song for my favorite lyric, but the first one is I get drunk but it's not enough because the morning comes and you're not my baby. It's such a good way of saying that when we go through something painful in our lives, especially heartbreak, a lot of times we try to find quick fixes. We try to distract ourselves as much as we possibly can, but then the next morning we wake up and we're like, oh shit, like I haven't actually made any progress to move on from this relationship. I've just been filling the void with all these like outside influences, all these, these outside substances, and it doesn't actually help in the long term of getting over someone. And what once was ours is no one's now. I don't have anything to say about that other than I just love how it sounds. It's beautifully written. It's like this blip in time that was such a small intimate thing between two people and now it's just it's done it's over and then i put down the entire bridge my heart my hips my body my love trying to find a part of me that you didn't touch gave up on me like i was a bad drug now i'm searching for signs in a haunted club our songs our films united we stand our country guess it was a lawless land quiet my fears with a touch of your hand paper cut stings from our paper thin plants my time my wine my spirit my trust trying to find a part of me you didn't take up gave you so much but it wasn't enough but i'll be all right it's just a thousand cuts that whole bridge I could spend forever breaking it down line by line and going over it, but it's just like all encompassing and it, it the feeling of it explains <laughs> it's the words, the lyrics, the, 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 the melody together, it's, you know, I could say so much but I'm speechless at the same time, but even the contrast between all of that, like everything that you've ever touched inside and outside of my body i think of you like i can't separate me from you but then at the end but i'll be all right it's just a thousand cuts like that contrast alone makes that a really strong bridge for me so that's it i know the video was really long i had actually went into it intending for it to be like quick like not breaking down everything that I'm saying, but that's what music does for me. It touches a spot in my heart, it touches a part in my soul, and I mean, that's what it is. I would love to hear what your favorite Taylor Swift songs are, and if you are not a fan of Taylor Swift, I don't know why you would make it this far in the video, but I would like to hear what your favorite songs are, what your favorite artists are, who your favorite artists are, what your favorite lyrics are. Leave it all down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.